Coming up on BG24 News. Rally Cap Sports continues to thrive at BGSU. And a new pipeline is causing controversy in Wood County. Plus, Bowling Green City officials met to discuss snow emergencies. We'll also take a look at your full Black Swamp weather forecast. Welcome to your campus and community connection. Live local news starts right now. This is BG24 News, live at 530. Good evening, everyone. I'm Nick Dombey. And I'm Amy Steggerwald. Thanks for joining us tonight. Last fall, Rally Cap Sports came to BGSU. Rally Cap is a nonprofit program that provides opportunities for children with disabilities. Children participate in different recreational sporting events. Over 60 participants and more than 75 volunteers participated. Business major and Rally Cap Sports Director Luke Sims is passionate about making an impact on the community. We're in a world that's consumed with um, for-profit businesses and here's a, an opportunity for a nonprofit um, that really impacts lives and so I've, I've developed a passion for that type of entrepreneurship and, and something I really want to move forward with. Bowling Green City Council had a meeting Monday. The meeting discussed many snow emergency concerns. The main concern is street parking when snowfall is higher than two inches. BG officials are now citing and ticketing individuals who fail to remove vehicles off snow streets. A minor fire occurred in Bowling Green early Wednesday morning. BG firefighters were called to the 500 block of 6th Street. As of now, no further details have been released about the cause of the fire. There is a new program coming to the Bowling Green Kiwanis Club. A pulmonary rehabilitation program was the subject of a meeting held at the Stone Ridge Golf Club earlier this afternoon. Registered respiratory therapists at the Wood County Hospital presented the pulmonary rehab program to the public. Kaylee Hodge joins us now for a first look at our weather. Uh, what can we expect, Kaylee? All right, well, we've got a nice warm-up on the way. Current look outside, it's 19 degrees out there. We have partly cloudy skies, so it's letting a lot of sunshine in. But unfortunately, that 8-mile-per-hour wind is making it feel like 6 degrees. This will be one of the coolest temperatures we'll be seeing in the next couple weeks, days, and I'll be telling you about that in my full forecast coming up. Thanks, Kaylee. A new natural gas pipeline in Wood County is causing controversy. Citizens attended a meeting Tuesday to ask commissioners to oppose the Nexus natural gas pipeline. Two dozen people attended the meeting, many of whom who do not want the line to run through their property. Others are unclear as to how the pipeline will benefit Wood County. The Wood County Sheriff's Office is preparing to add Walbridge and Lake Township to its dispatch. The contract for the move was signed on Tuesday during a trustees meeting. Some officials expressed concerns at the meeting, such as response time, while others believe that this new system will work out just fine. The new system will launch later this month. Coming up when we return, a Bowling Green Congressman reintroduces a bill. Plus, Wood County is preparing for spring weather. Details ahead. Three men were recently indicted on sex crimes by a Wood County grand jury. Jade Shank was indicted for one count of rape and two counts of gross sexual imposition. The incident occurred earlier this month. Neil Jimison and David Bohan were also both indicted on one count of gross sexual imposition. Four people were injured in an accident in Perrysburg last week. Two cars had collided at the intersection of Ohio 25 in Rochton Road. The four involved were taken to the hospital. No major injuries were reported. Faults of the accident was not determined and no citations were issued. A fire occurred earlier this morning in the Perrysburg Township. Perrysburg fire crews responded to a fire on Sheringham Road. Northwood firefighters were also called to the scene. According to authorities, the home was heavily damaged. One person was sent to the local hospital with minor injuries. The cause of the fire is still unknown. Wood County is participating in a new statewide tornado drill tomorrow morning. The outside sirens will start at 9.50 a.m. as a part of a Spring Severe Weather Awareness Week. The National Weather Services will also test weather radios and announce another drill scheduled for Saturday. For more information on severe weather conditions and storm safety, contact the Wood County Emergency Management Agency. Bowling Green's former park and rec director is starting a new job in Toledo. Michelle Gregor is now director of park programming for the Toledo Metro Parks. Gregor previously worked for the Metro Park for the Metro Parks as assistant form, as assistant program director. Gregor will start her new director job this month. 
A congressman from Bowling Green has reintroduced legislation. Congressman Bob Latta reintroduced the Veterans Affair Appeals Backlog Relief Act. This legislation would require a VA to, cer uh, to certify appeal claims within 12 months. The goal of the bill is to speed up the appeal processes in order for veterans to receive their benefits sooner. The Northwestern Water and Sewer is turning to Ohio residents for help. They're asking people to become hydrant heroes by keeping the areas around fire hydrants free from snow and ice. Many fire departments require three, a three-foot circle around hydrants to create clear paths for firefighters. Coming up when we return, the Ohio State Highway Patrol is cracking down on impaired driving. Plus, we'll have your full Black Swamp weather forecast. Stay with us. Live local forecast with BG24 Black Swamp Weather. We have a dramatic warm-up on the way. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kaylee Hodge with your Black Swamp Weather Forecast. Current look outside, it's 19 degrees out there. We have some partly cloudy skies, so it's letting in a lot of sunshine. But unfortunately, this north wind from the, uh, coming in at 8 miles per hour is making it feel a little chillier. It's going to feel like 6 degrees on your skin. Tonight, we're going to cool down to 3 degrees. This will be the coolest temperature you will be seeing for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll have those clear skies, which is letting a lot of that heat on the surface of the Earth escape into the upper layers of the atmosphere. So that's why it's going to get down to that cooler temperature before we have our warm-up on the way later this week. Tomorrow, we're going to be warming up to 25 degrees. Again, we'll be having that sunshine in the area, but keep in mind the south wind is coming in at 16 miles per hour. So even though it's coming in from the south and it's bringing warm air to us, it still will have a bit of a wind chill factor and it's going to feel like only 10 degrees on your skin. Tomorrow night, we're not going to cool down much. We're only cooling down to 22 degrees. We'll have some clouds move into our area. That'll be acting as a bit of a blanket, helping us stay warmer. And also, it's being caused by the south wind coming in with all those warm temperatures that are going to be leading into that warm-up later this week. A look at temperatures in our area right now. We're all right around 19 degrees. Bowling Green is at 19, Toledo at 19, Fremont is our warmest at 20, and Sandusky is our coolest at 17 degrees. A look at our local radar, you can see we don't have much going on. Lots of clear skies in Bowling Green's area, and you're going to be seeing this is a pattern. We're not going to be seeing much precipitation as we head into the next couple days. A look at our national radar, you can see that we did have a little bit of a storm system that cut up through the south of Ohio. We just barely missed it, but it didn't affect us. It did, however, put down a lot of snow and rain showers uh, across the most southern part of the nation. You can see right here we've got a band of snow that uh, had previously melted off, but just got put down again last night by that snow. Also, we have these flood warnings off by the West Virginia and Kentucky border. That's because those uh, snow melted off and was starting to cause flooding. And then that second layer of snow came over and it clogged drains and clogged gutters. That's why they're under that flood warning because that could be causing some damage in their area. A look at that warm-up, what's going to be causing it is we have this high-pressure system. It's going to be moving off into our east, and air tends to rotate uh, clockwise around the high-pressure system. So once it's off to this side of our east, it's going to be pulling warm air up from the south, which is going to be giving us our warm-up. I want to just take a look at our campus and community connection page picture of the day. I'd like to thank you, Laura Dorning, for bringing us this beautiful picture from earlier this morning of our uh, off by the Union and the Oaks. You can see we have these blue skies in the background as that sun started to peep in, so it's going to make it feel nice and warm. And it's only the coldest day of the next five days. So as you see the next five days, we're going to have this nice warming trend. Friday, we're going to have a high of 25. Saturday, we're going to have a high of 39. And then we're going to get up into the 40s Sunday and into Monday before we hit a high of 49 on Tuesday with lots of sunshine and no chance of rain. So it's going to be a very pleasant day to get outside. Uh, well, I'll be leaving Bowling Green when all this nice weather comes. I hope it's as nice where at my house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the past uh, few weeks we've been complaining about, all oh, the weather's going to be cold, the weather's going to be cold, but this is nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a very nice warming trend. It's a good example of spring for your spring break. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Mm -hmm. All right, well, a North Baltimore crash closed a section of I-75 last night. The Ohio State Highway Patrol sent out an email stating the crash happened on I-75 southbound. There are no injuries at the scene, but the cause of the crash is still unknown. The I-75 roadway was reopened this morning. Finley has a new addition to their Children's Museum. The Finley Fire Station No. 5 will be open to the public on March 21st. Finley Fire Department, Fire Relief Foundation, and Red Cross have created a new fire station display to educate children on fire safety. Admission for this event starts at $5 and is open for all ages. A rollover crash happened earlier this morning in South Toledo.
Just north of the Toledo Zoo, the vehicle was slammed by a box truck before flipping onto its top. The driver of the vehicle was taken to a local hospital, but there is no word on the driver's condition at this time. A new bill in Ohio regarding test scores in schools was passed. The bill prevents schools from using scores from proficiency tests to determine the advancement of a student onto the next grade level. The Ohio Senate voted unanimously for the bill. The legislation also prevents schools from losing state aid because of students not taking standardized tests this year. The Ohio State Highway Patrol continues to crack down on impaired driving. Last year, troopers arrested over 20,000 impaired drivers. This is the third year in a row that this number was reached. Over 600 of these arrests came from the Bowling Green Post. Alcohol influence crashes account for over 30% of fatal crashes in Ohio. And now Juan Pimiento joins us for a look at campus and community sports. Juan? Thanks, Amy. Coming up, the men's basketball team took the court this week for senior night at the Stro. Plus, we'll take a look at this weekend's gymnastics, baseball, and softball action and have a full preview of hockey's regular season finale. All this and more when we come back. It's unfalcon believable coverage that you won't get anywhere else. This is BG24 Sports. Welcome to BG24 Sports. I'm Juan Pimiento. The men's basketball team fell short in a close contest against Kent State on senior night at the Stroh Center. The game featured the two scoring differences in the conference. Senior forward Rashawn Holmes led the Falcons with a career-high 29 points, along with 9 rebounds and 4 blocks. However, Holmes' efforts were insufficient to overcome Kent State's 13 three-pointers and four players scoring in double figures. The game came down to the wire where it goes straight to the fourth quarter. It was a close contest. The Falcons are up by two going into the last minute of play, but with 46 seconds to go, Kent State's Devereaux Manley shoots the three from beyond the arc and sinks it. Kent State takes the one-point lead, 78-77. to 77. 13 seconds to go, Devin Dickerson gets fouled in the paint. He goes to the line for free throws. He had missed the first free throw already. He goes for the second one and misses it as well. Kent State would go up by two after hitting two free throws after that. Five seconds left, Javon Clark open for the three-pointer, takes it, but it's no good. Bowling Green has to foul Kent, trying to stay in this one. Kent makes both three throws and puts them ahead, 81-77. to Richelle Holmes with the three at the buzzer. We'll take a look at a little bit after the free throw. There it is, he takes the three. It is good, but it's not sufficient. The Falcons will lose this one. Kent State takes down Bowling Green by a score of 81-80. to With the loss, the Falcons now sit in a three-way tie atop of the East Division with Kent State and Buffalo at 11-6. Head coach Chris Jan says Kent State's defense down the stretch made a difference in the game. Uh, you knew the game was going to be high level. You knew the game was going to be intense. And at the end of the day, they had some guards step up and make some huge shots when they really needed them. And every time, I felt like every time we had a chance uh, to put a nail in the coffin, um, they wouldn't allow us to do it. The team will wrap up the regular season tomorrow night at Buffalo. Tip-off is scheduled for 7 p.m. Another team closing this regular season is the hockey team. The team clinched home field advantage for the first round of the WCHA playoffs last weekend at Alaska Anchorage. Reporter Toby Fleming has a preview of this weekend's season finale in Alabama. Toby? Thanks, Juan. The Falcons are looking to rebound after that 6-1 loss last Saturday at Alaska Anchorage. This weekend, the Falcons face off against Alabama Huntsville. The Chargers are currently tied for eighth in the WCHA, while the Falcons secured that number three seat for the WCHA tournament. BG also leads the all-time series against the Chargers 11-3-1, including two road victories earlier this season. The series will also mark the last regular season series for the Falcons before the start of tournament play. So it'll be a very exciting series and the Falcons are looking to end their series on a positive note. Puck is set to drop at 7.07 p.m. tomorrow night at the BGSU Ice Arena. Now back to you Juan in the studio. Thank you Toby. Again the Falcons will finish off the season with a doubleheader at Alabama Huntsville. The WCHA playoffs begin March 13th. Women's basketball looks its 10th consecutive game last night at home against Buffalo. Junior Miriam Justinger led the team with 13 points and senior Deborah Hoekstra contributed with her sixth double-double of the season. She finished the game with 12 points and a game-high 13 rebounds. The Falcons continue to free-fall with a 9-19 record and 2-15 in conference play. BG will finish the regular season at home this Saturday against Akron. The game is set to start at 2 p.m. The gymnastics teams will travel to New Jersey for the final road meet of the season. 
The Falcons have lost eight of their last ten matchups and come in with a 5 and 7 overall record and 1 and 4 in the MAC. The team will take on host team Rutgers as well as Bridgeport and Westchester. The meet begins Saturday at 6 p.m. Baseball season continues as the Falcons begin their annual spring break road trip this weekend. The road trip begins with a three-game series in North Carolina against Campbell University. The Falcons took two out of three in their last series against Western Kentucky and come in with a 3-3 three three overall record. The Camels are off to a great start to the season, winning eight of their first ten games. The first game of the series starts tomorrow at 4 p.m. The softball team will also travel south for their next series to compete in the USF Under Armour Invitational in Clearwater, Florida. This is the second tournament for the Falcons this season. Last month, they participated in the Cougar Classic Tournament, finishing with three wins and one loss. The girls will face off against Penn and Seton Hall tomorrow. Saturday will be a doubleheader against Villanova in Maine, and they'll finish off on Sunday against SIU Edwardsville. That's all for VG24 Sports. Check us out on Facebook and follow us on Twitter now for sports, for the latest scores and news. I'm Juan Pimiento. We'll be right back. Bowling Green's high school cheerleaders are now number one in the state. The BGHS team won Division I competition this past Sunday. Members of this year's squad say the team is more motivated than ever. The team will have their last performance at this Friday's basketball game. Looking for some entertainment this weekend? You may not have to look too far. Perrysburg Junior High is presenting Susical the Musical. Over 100 junior high students are set to perform. They will perform alongside professional musicians in this Dr. Seuss-themed play. Performances are Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 2 p.m. Tickets are $10. A group of BGSU faculty is creating a series of recitals that feature trumpet music. The hope is that the recitals will give students a better understanding of trumpet music. They get a chance to hear um, some new literature performed, also get a chance to hear the teachers that they study with. Uh, we get to you know, hear some of the concepts that we talk about and see how they're put into action. Students were amazed to see their professor's performance. They took notes and had questions for their professors after the recital. Kaylee joins us for a last look at our Black Swamp weather forecast. Kaylee? Yeah, we finally got a very spring-like warm-up on the way for our spring break. If you take a look outside right now, it's 19, and that's the coolest temperature you're going to be seeing this upcoming week. We have highs heading up into the 40s on Sunday and up near 50 at 49 on Tuesday. Lots of sunshine, very dry, warm weather. Wow, wish I was going to like said, I wish I could be in Bowling Green this weekend. It looks like it's going to be really nice for everyone. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be staying here, so I'm intending to enjoy that as much as possible. Yeah, all the, mm -hmm. all, all the students staying here are for sure going to enjoy yeah. some nice weather over their spring break, even though they can't go home. Oh. At 50 degrees, it's about ready to go outside yeah. and take Yeah, and I can put on some oh. shorts. <laughs> yeah, it seems like if we want better weather, uh, we'll be following the baseball team down to Florida. Oh. Yeah, oh, definitely. We're, we're kind of jealous, but you know it's going to get warmer <laughs> when basketball and hockey are about to wrap up the regular season. That's you, a good indication. You, you know spring's coming when you oh, see yep, that, Yep, absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. And it was perfectly timed to spring break, this nice spring-like warm-up, so mm -hmm. I'm excited. Oh, yeah. yeah, when we Very come back, there will be some nice, hopefully when we come back, there will be nice weather. <laughs> hopefully. Long, we want yeah. us to be walking to class in negative, what, negative yeah. 15 yeah. again. No more <laughs> snow hills as you walk by. Yeah. Like that. I can't promise that, but I can promise that the days are getting longer, the sun is getting higher in the sky, and we're getting a lot more sunshine to help warm us up. So Thank you. it will be warming up. That's right, good. Daily. Well, that's all for BG24 News tonight. Check out these stories and more online at BG24news.org. And check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Have a great night, everyone.